Wooski grew up in a hood with consistent risk of getting his life took from gun violence. This guy lost over 40 homies to the streets and survived a headshot that most people would have died from. Wooski is lucky, but did he really change from that headshot? This is Top Trend TV. And this is an overlook of if Wooski really changed from a headshot. There were a total of six people who were shot outside the church. It was a pandemonium, a scene of pandemonium right after that happened. You know you ride through my block. One face you always gonna see that known face that you're looking for. Chase your ass down. Trip the shit out you. Damn, I'm gonna stand over. Marvell Williams, aka Wooski, is originally from Old Block, and so is his brother Big Mike, who also lived in Parkway Gardens with him. But the only difference between him and Wooski is that Wooski was a GD, and his brother Big Mike was a BD. Some say Wooski moved because he didn't fit in, but it is also rumored that he was the shooter of Larry Marshall, who was a 29-year-old guy from Old Block who was shot and killed after a street fight broke out in front of Old Block. The large crowd of gang members dispersed after gunfire rang out, and 29-year-old Larry Marshall was on the ground, who later died at the hospital. And if Wooski was really the shooter of Larry Marshall, that would make him about 11 years old around the time this happened. This created a lot of tension between Wooski and Old Block, and Wooski moved around the St. Lawrence area and clicked up with STL even harder, getting close with sets like STL, 051 Young Money, and Gyro City, which his set claimed blocks from St. Lawrence Avenue all the way down to Vernon Avenue, which train tracks on 63rd Street separate Old Block and St. Lawrence. So if anybody from Old Block came across 63rd Street, which is across the tracks, they would be in great danger and be out of their territory. That's if they wasn't searching for ops. Wooski's name also comes up that he testified when he was only 11 years old in a murder case. He testified that he observed a number of individuals, including the defendant playing dice. He saw McClure and Griffin join the game. At some point during the dice game, McClure asked the defendant to return $2 so that McClure could go on the bus and go home. The defendant and McClure began to argue and the defendant shot him in the chest. Then the defendant then shot Griffin. Williams aka Wooski heard a total of four gunshots. He did not see McClure or Griffin with a gun though. At some point after the shooting, Williams aka Wooski saw an individual named Darius grab a gun from beneath the bush and run off with it before the police arrived. Karee Reese was found guilty of first degree murder of Mashawn McClure. But on January 12, 2011, Wooski and STL will lose a close member, Charnel Gregory aka Tuka, and two other people were waiting for the westbound 63rd bus. When a gunman walked up and asked everyone if another bus was coming, he then walked behind the bus shelter, pulled out a silver handgun, and shot Tuka once. Tuka staggered to a nearby trash can where the gunman shot him three more times in the back. Gregory, aka Tuka, was dead on the scene, and he was really close to Wooski and FBG Duck. He is also one of the top dismembers by the BDs, but on November 11, 2011, Wooski will lose another close member to him. His name was Carlton Archer, aka Tutu, and the BDs dissed this guy a good amount in their music. A 17-year-old boy was found dead in the alley after being shot in the head and torso that Thursday night in the West Woodlawn neighborhood, police said. Police say a man was walking his dog when he found a body in the alley and called the police. Police found him in an alley in the 6200 block of South Albert Hart Avenue at about 10 p.m. Tutu was a GD from Gyro City, and this guy was known to put in work. He was allegedly responsible for the murder of Jizzle from Squirt Town, who died on September 26, 2011, and apparently FBG Duck and KI was on a hit with him. The shooting happened around 4.12 p.m. on the 400 block of East 60th Street. Police said Carl Spencer was walking down the street when the gunman, who was walking with a group of men, which was KI, FBG Duck, and about two other people when allegedly Tutu opened fire, hitting just on the left side of the head, right shoulder, and abdomen. He was taken to the hospital where he later died from his injuries. Two months later, Tutu was killed. Jizzle had alliances with Old Block and 600, but only about a year later, another close member of Wooski would get his life taken from gun violence. Jalen Strogner, 
aka Jaja, was only 17 when he was shot and killed in front of his mother and two younger brothers outside of a laundromat in the back of the Yards neighborhood on August 31st, 2012. His mother said, just to see my son land in that puddle of blood, and I couldn't do nothing to save him. Describing her last moments with Jalen, I just called and screamed his name and he wasn't responding. His mother also said Jaja just helped her bring in two loads of laundry into the laundromat on that Friday afternoon. As he walked out, a young man Jaja didn't know tried to ask him questions. Jaja asked him what did he say and the guy reached over and pulled out a gun and shot him right on the 48th street of Ashland Avenue. Jaja was also a close member of the Wooski, FBG Duck, and his crew, but Jaja was from Jairo City, and a 17-year-old man was arrested for killing Jaja. Unsure if Jaja's killer actually had any gang affiliation, but Jaja was a well-respected Jairo City member that knew people from many sets. These murders turned Wooski into a savage and made him go slide. Wooski is rumored to be involved in many murders. We won't be going over these key murders because Wooski is still alive, but Wooski would lose another close member to him in 2014, which was Jakira Barnes, and she was a girl from the STL set. Jakira Barnes was a girl and she was known to put down her ops, even though some people say she didn't have any bodies, but she was really close to Wooski, which is her alleged killer is King Vaughn, and after this murder, Wooski wanted even more get back. But on January 2nd, 2018, Wooski would drop a diss song named Computer's Remix, dissing all of his ops and dissing the dead. This song today has over 27 million views, but Less than 10 months later, on October 22nd, 2018, Wooski would be shot in the head with five other people outside of a funeral held for Dusky the man that was shot and killed that month. Wooski was shot in the head by a bullet that ricocheted off the ground and hit him in the head. FBG Duck's mother was even there and she even said she was terrified for her life. She said she even fainted after the gunshot stopped. Wooski though went through months of rehabilitation and some people say Wooski is not the same after being shot in the head. He used to diss a lot more in his music and in videos. Well, they gonna get that bit Swiss cheese. As of today, he doesn't diss a lot in his videos. And his flow on the music tip seems to be off beat since the incident, which you can hear in the song B.O.N., which was dropped a year after he was shot in the head. On October 31st, 2020, he went to diss Lil Dirt and Old Block many times in the music video too. But before the incident, Wooski just seemed like he went a lot harder. And you can tell that he laughs at a lot of stuff these days. And when he's caught on camera these days, he might crack a joke and laugh. But back then when he was caught on camera, he would always diss and throw up his set. These days, he doesn't too much gangbang though after the incident. And some of the words that Wooski say are actually slurred. So did Wooski really change from the headshot like King Vaughn said in that song? Let me know down in the comments. Make sure you like or dislike, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments who y'all want to see next. And as always, stay blessed and stay well. Yeah, yeah, I'm out.